Hello again and welcome back to our final PW meeting of the season. Our theme tonight is caring for each other side by side and I have asked two of our members, Erin Wilson and Christine Johnson, to join me in a question and answer session on caring. Think of how many body parts you have. Think of the intricacies of your design. Think of how one body part can help another, making up for deficiencies and providing what is lacking. Think of how all the parts work together, keeping you alive and in working order. Just as God designed our physical bodies with different parts to work together, he is building the church, which is the body of Christ, and he has a variety of work for every one of his people to do, both in bringing the gospel to those outside the kingdom and in building one another up within it. There is no retirement age and no unemployment. Everyone has a part to play at every stage of their life on earth. In 1 Corinthians 12 verses 24 to 26 we read, God has so composed the body, giving greater honour to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together. Jesus says in John 13, verses 34, 35, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have the love for one another. God's people must love and care for one another, and in doing so, they will also show others what Jesus is like. Let's ask some questions and see what else we can learn from the Bible about his loving care. Who should we love? Other Christians. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Our neighbour. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbour to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Why should we love? In obedience. This is my command, love each other. For unity. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity. As unto him. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. For his glory. So that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. How should we love? Deeply. Love one another deeply from the heart. In action. Let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. In sincerity. Love must be sincere. Unselfishly. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. What does this love look like? Relational. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Supportive. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Compassionate. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. Patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. So where do we begin? What does it look like for you and me to get alongside each other and demonstrate Christ's love as we care for one another. 
Returning to our earlier illustration, we're going to consider parts of the body to explore how we can get alongside others and care for them. Before we do that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we consider these things together, we ask that you would show each one of us how we can come alongside one other, one another woman and show loving care for her. Help us all to listen to you and to be willing to follow your leading. We pray in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Using your arms and hands. Take someone's hand to show your support. Put an arm around someone's shoulder to comfort them. Come alongside others in practical ways. What could you do over the next month to help someone? Is the Lord bringing a specific person to mind? Using your feet. Invite someone from another age group for a walk. Take time to get to know each other. Share your story. Walk to someone's door to visit them or walk across the room to start a conversation. Come alongside someone to journey with them through a difficult time. Is there someone younger going through something you have experienced? A life situation or a difficult round of treatment? Who will the Lord lead you to? Using your mouth and ears. Be aware of those around you. Take the initiative. Start a conversation. Listen. Really hear what she is saying. I'm fine doesn't always mean that. Give her time to talk without interruption and give her your full attention. Share the gospel. Are you ready with an answer for anyone who asks you about the hope you have? How will you do it with gentleness and respect? Pray. Who will you pray for privately? Why not pray with them? Could you meet regularly with one or two others to pray? How about intentionally arranging for women of all of different generations to pray together? Encourage others. Who could you thank or compliment? Using your mind. Share what you have learnt. In Titus 2, we are told that those with more experience are to train those coming behind. Throughout life, God teaches us many things, bringing us through experiences which can then be used to help others. What has the Lord taught you? Using your heart. When Jesus looked at people, he was filled with compassion. We too need to have compassionate hearts. We cannot fix the situations, but we can be there to listen, to comfort, and to point others to the one who alone brings hope. So ask God to give your heart for the hurting. Is there someone who needs your compassion? Using your eyes. Whether we have 20-20 vision or wear contact lenses or glasses, we often fail to see things which are right in front of us. The same thing can happen with people. Someone might be right beside us, but we fail to notice her need of someone to care for her. Pray that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to see who he wants you to come alongside to show love and care. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word which makes clear how your people should relate to one another. Help us to be intentional in encouraging one another and building each other up as you have told us to do. Forgive us for often being hesitant to do as you command. Help us to actively seek opportunities to care for others and in doing so, demonstrate your love to them. Help each one of us to put into action what we have decided to do as a first step. May we always be ready to get alongside those 
you put in our path for their and our benefit and for your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I ask you to reflect on what you have heard and find ways, difficult as it is at this time of the pandemic, to share with others side by side. At the end of our season, I thought it would be useful to remind you what our PW role and purpose is. We are committed to encourage and equip women to become disciples of Christ. The PW supports the development of ministry among women. We support the work of the Council of Mission in Ireland by helping to fund the training of deaconesses and the outreach in South Belfast Friendship House. We support a global mission. Each year we select two special projects, one at home and one abroad, through donations to our mission fund. And this could not happen without the support from everyone in our church, not just the PW. So I'd like to remind you about contributing to our PW Mission Fund, where we, envelopes are available in your church pack, and it's traditionally that we uh, use those envelopes in the month of May. And I'd like to thank you for your continuing support. Now follows two short video clips, which explain the work of the two projects. Open began as a response to the silence in churches which so often surround the sensitive issues of unintended pregnancy and pregnancy loss, including miscarriage and abortion. We know that there are many in our churches for whom these sensitive issues are a part of their story, and yet they are afraid to share about it for fear of judgment. Uh, so our aim at Open is to help create within churches an environment where we can talk about these issues with grace and with compassion. We offer church leaders training, we offer pastoral training, um, and as a response to our speaking in churches, um, we also offer post-abortion healing retreat weekends and miscarriage healing retreat days for those who do respond um, and want to come and address the ways in which these issues have affected their lives. So I grew up in a Christian home and to me abortion was almost unthinkable. I always said that I would never have one. I couldn't believe that people could actually do that. And then um, I found myself pregnant when I was at college. I had no idea what to do. I just thought in the situation that I'm in, I'm studying and I don't have any money, we're not married, I've just come back to church. What are they going to think? I can remember very clearly yeah. the first thing I said and it was we have to get out of it. I've just been on an open uh, healing retreat, it's a post-abortion healing retreat, and I came into it not knowing at all what was going to come up for me. I uncovered a lot of things that I didn't even know were affecting me, a lot of issues surrounding my anger, because I'd experienced quite intense, an intense period of anger. It was very open, very safe, very honest um, and I feel like I've come on more in the past couple of days than I have in a long time. Our retreats called Open and Loved are for those who have experienced either unintended pregnancy or miscarriage to share with others what they have been through and the way it has affected them. We offer retreats for women and for couples across Northern Ireland to take some time aside to a safe place, to reflect on what they have been through and to acknowledge that their babies existed and are loved. I would just like to say thank you to everyone involved for making today happen. Um, it was a really lovely day, um, difficult at times and exploring very difficult emotions. But I did find um, being amongst people who've gone through similar experiences a really good help at a very, very difficult time. The Love Retreat was just a beautiful day to acknowledge a painful experience in life and to share it with other people who have also had painful experience of miscarriage. Um, just felt that I received a lot of grace and just given that time 
to acknowledge the life that was and that is no longer and also to really tap into God and his presence with me in that. So I'd strongly advise anyone who's had a similar experience to definitely come along to the Loved Retreat um, to receive an awful lot of healing in that one day. I was encouraged to come after sharing that I had had five miscarriages and I found it a really healing, a really wholesome day of being able to share with other women what had happened. It was one day where I could share my innermost thoughts and feelings and have healing through the remembrance during that day. I would encourage people to come and just avail of the real healing presence that happens during that day. Through our retreats, we hope to lift the silence that so often surrounds pregnancy loss and to bring hope and healing to those who have been affected. When we hear of Nepal, our first thought is of Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world and part of the Himalayan mountain range. Travel within Nepal is shaped by the terrain, with most roads twisting and turning, rising and falling, so journeys are measured not so much in distance as in time. The Overseas Project for 2021 is set against this beautiful and challenging backdrop. Our focus is on Okaldonga Community Hospital, which is an eight hour drive east of Kathmandu. The hospital is built on the side of the hill, nestled in a valley. In some places, the tarmac road to the hospital has been damaged by landslide, and in other places, it is not finished and is only passable with care in the dry season. The 50-bed General Hospital provides care for the population of the surrounding rural districts. One of the facilities of this hospital is the Maternal Waiting Home. Over the past 16 years, this has provided care for many expectant mothers who live in these districts. The average journey time to the hospital is four hours by bus, jeep or motorcycle. Hello, I'm John Paget. I'm a, a GP from Australia and I've been in Okaldunga now uh, just a bit over two months and her, my wife Sally and I are delighted to be here. So the maternal waiting home, yes, I mean in particular at the moment um, there are needs for some renovations to the building, in particular water management, drainage and water supply uh, to make it easier for things like cooking and cleaning. That's, that will be a, a lovely thing to be able to do for the maternal waiting home to make it more comfortable for the, the women and their, and their partners who stay there. Um, I, I think it's in need of a paint job as well. So those kinds of renovating type um, uh, things for the building would be very much appreciated. When a mother attends the hospital for her checkup, if the staff feel that there may be a difficulty with the birth, they recommend that she come to the waiting home one or two weeks before her due date. In the home, she's given regular checkups, classes on nutrition, on baby care, family planning and so on. As the mother is there for a length of time, a family member, her husband, mother or sister, is encouraged to accompany her and support her during her stay at the home. Among other things, they help prepare meals, simple foods such as rice and vegetables form their staple diet. And fathers-to-be are expected to be hands-on with the cooking of meals and childcare. Alongside the accommodation, good sanitation, hot water and good food, which we take for granted, a major benefit for the new parents is the sense of family which is created and friendships which are made. 
Uh, we are very much glad to see you and your interest to work and partner with us. And it is very much beneficial for the um, rural people of Nepal. Uh, and it will be very uh, good uh, for us to make um, join joining hand uh, and also making a good partner in the future. The maternal waiting home has made such a difference in the lives of so many and will continue to do so. This year in PW, we have the opportunity to partner with this project. PCI have many missionaries. Please remember them in your prayers. They are James and Heather Cochran in Portugal, Stephen and Angelina Cowan in Kenya, Diane Cusick in Zambia, Peter and Jane Fleming in Nepal, Derek and Jane French in Northern Spain, Volker and Jan Hill Glissman in Malawi, Chris and Rachel Humphreys in Portugal, Naomi Keefe in Brazil, Steve and Rosie Kennedy in Romania, Edwin and Anne Kibathi in London, Naomi Laramore in Kenya, Peter and Valerie Lockwood in Nepal, Gary and Mary Reid in Kenya, and Casaba and Iona Veres in Romania. And if you want to find out more about these individual people who are our missionaries, you can go to the PCI website and learn more about them. And now finally, after a year when we all had many worries and anxieties, I thought you might like to hear about a few of our members who had caused to celebrate. Jean Allen celebrated her 90th birthday, Jean Hamill celebrated her 80th birthday, and Roberta and Jim Alderdice celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. Congratulations to all of them. I hope you have enjoyed listening to our monthly meetings, and I know many have listened in who don't normally attend the PW, but I hope you will be encouraged to join with us in September, when hopefully we'll be able to meet in the church hall, and we would very much welcome new people, no matter what age you are. If and when it is possible, we may be able to organise a meal together, as it is usual for us to end our season with an outing or a meal. So, God willing, we will meet again in September, when hopefully you will have a new leader, as I am stepping down for now. God bless. <laughs>